There was a political tremor in Beijing today. Within seven months, a foreign minister of the country has been sacked twice. On the 30th of December, the veteran Wang Yi was suddenly dropped. Wang Yi was a man who gave an uncharacteristic, aggressive twist to Chinese diplomacy, turning his bureaucrats into wolf warriors. Yes, wolves. He clearly liked a bit of blood in his policies. Wang Yi did not go quietly, however. He had to be accommodated in a party position as director of the office of the Central Foreign Affairs Commission, from where he was permitted occasionally to foray into international affairs. For instance, when he met President Putin in Moscow. But it was clear that Wang Yi was seething with rage within, although he kept a straight face. In his place came the former Chinese ambassador to Washington, the calm and pleasant-looking Chin Gang. It seemed a clear signal from the man who made the changes. President Xi Jinping, the leader who is believed to have more power in Beijing than anyone since Mao Zedong, after he gave himself an unprecedented third term. The signal was less wolf, more work. The new foreign minister delivered spectacularly, particularly by brokering a stunning détente between Saudi Arabia and Tehran that shocked Washington. And then suddenly, Chin Gang, the new 57-year-old foreign minister, went missing. Yes, missing. Around 31 days ago, and he has not been seen since. I can't think of another foreign minister of a major nation who has gone missing like this. One who has simply disappeared. One day in office, the next day disappeared into thin air. It was something right out of a blockbuster suspense thriller. I can't think of another foreign minister of such a nation who has simply gone missing. Can you? So let's decode what exactly happened. Where exactly is the man? Is he sick? Is he in prison? What was his crime? Very quickly his place was filled by Wang Yi, who began to go to meetings of foreign ministers, summits, and even conferences of NSAs. And as for Chin Gang, the rumor mill has gone into overdrive. Of course, there is much speculation that the reason is a love affair with a Cambridge-educated reporter and TV personality called Fu Xiaoxian. She is an international celebrity of sorts, the host of a talk show on China's Phoenix TV. Curiously, or rather not so curiously, she too has been missing for weeks now. Interestingly, right before she disappeared, Fu Xiaoxian shared pictures of a jet, a screenshot of her interview with Chin, and a picture of her son. So what was all this about? This is another mystery. In any case, the decision to bring Wang back was taken at a much awaited meeting in Beijing, a meeting of the Chinese Communist Party's Politburo. Now let me explain. For the Unverse, the Politburo is the decision-making body of the CCP, led naturally by Xi Jinping himself. It comprises 24 top officials who oversee the central government. And they are the ones who decide the party's agenda and therefore the government's policies. Remember, the party is the real authority in China, not the government. Even the National Army, the PLA, owes its allegiance, owes allegiance to the party, not to the country. So yesterday, what happened? The Politburo assembled in Beijing. The official agenda included the economy, which of course, as we've been reporting, has been in trouble to say the least. The aim, they said, was to present counter-cyclical measures, adjust and expand policies for the country's economy. China's governance is run on a rather staid and predictable timetable, but this particular Politburo meeting was called ahead. It was pre-pawned. Why? The answer seems to be both political and economical. Of course, China's economy is in great trouble. GDP growth has all but slowed down the pillars of growth like the property industry, have been incurring massive losses. Banks are on the edge. Unemployment among the youth, specifically, is running at unprecedented levels. Chinese provinces are sinking under debt. And if we speak of investment in property development, which is a vital driver of both industrial and consumer demand, it sank 7.9% in the first half of the year compared to a year earlier. And analysts say that this is a rather troubling sign of persisting weakness in the industry. It's cause for worry for China, especially its leader. But that is not the big story. The needle of suspicion has now moved in another direction. A question is being asked. Has Xi Jinping begun to slip? 
Let that sink in. For days, reports have been circulating about differences within the CCP. And at the crux of these claims is the fact that thousands of people around the world have renounced their affiliation with the CCP, its regiments and associated organizations included. So does the return of Wangi mean that his enemies within the Politburo and in the party have taken advantage of a fault line to snub the so far all-powerful Xi? Talk is rife of differences within the CCP as well. Worse, the party is feeling humiliated by the fact that thousands of its members are actually leaving the Chinese Communist Party, where once membership was prized and difficult to get because it meant entry into the country's most elite and powerful club. Back to my big question. Does the return of Wangi mean that the days of Xi's virtual dictatorship are now over? No definitive answers yet, but the politics of Beijing has suddenly become that much more provocative. We'll, of course, stay on top of it. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.